Okay, let's use Taylor's theorem to actually approximate something now. Um, and we can do this to a specified tolerance because we know sort of the error that we need. So if I have an infinitely differentiable function, I can figure out how many terms in the Taylor series I need to add up to get uh, an approximation within a certain tolerance. So let's, let's see an example. Let's say I want to estimate the sine of one radian within uh, a tolerance, so maybe to five decimal places, so within um, 10 to the negative sixth, and we'll definitely have five decimal places uh, accurate without having to worry about rounding errors. Okay. So Taylor's theorem, we can we can get a uh, a, uh, a a Taylor series for the sine. Um, I probably don't want to center it at one because if I would center it at one, I, that would mean that the first term in the Taylor series, I'd have to know what the sine of one is. So we should pick some number that I can center it at where I can evaluate the sine at that number and the derivatives of the sine, like the cosine, at that number too. So I'm going to center my Taylor series at zero. Taylor polynomial. Okay, so let's let's see how this is going to work. How am I going to figure out what the Taylor polynomial looks like? Well, I'm going to say f of x equals the sine of x. Then f prime at x equals the cosine of x. We haven't proven these derivatives, but we'll we'll use them for this example. The second derivative would be the negative sine of x, and the third derivative would be the negative cosine of x. And then this is equal to the fourth derivative at x again, and this is the fifth, and this is the sixth, and we get this pattern that these four things repeat. Uh, indefinitely. So our Taylor series, our Taylor polynomial degree in it's gonna start out with well I have to evaluate these at zero to figure out what my coefficients are. Uh, sine of zero is zero so these are zero uh, this the cosine of zero is one the sine of zero is zero so the negative sine of zero is zero and then negative one so my Taylor polynomial starts out uh, p sub n at x is equal to zero plus one times x minus zero to the first plus 0 over 2 times x minus 0 squared minus 1 over 6 times x minus 0 cubed and so on. Um, and I can rewrite this then as we'll, we'll start at we just want the odd guys so we'll start at n equals zero and we'll go to uh, the floor oh, sorry k equals zero if I want the degree n guy floor of n over two okay and then I'm gonna take negative one to the k divided by, well, 
I want the odd exponent, guys. So 2k plus 1 factorial and x to the 2k plus 1. Um, I think that gets me to n if I use the right floor. It might be, I might have like a minus one here too, I'm not sure. Uh, let's, let's check. So if I want the degree three guy, that's just going to be, well, we have the degree three written out here that's going to be x minus x cubed over six. Let's check that this is what happens here. If I put n equals three in, I get the sum from k equals 0 to the floor of 3 halves is 1 and I get negative 1 to the k x to the 2k plus 1 over 2k plus 1 factorial which is exactly that. Okay, Does it work for the even ones too? Well p3 and P4 are uh, both the same thing. P4, the degree 4 polynomial, would be the same thing as the degree 3 polynomial because there is no degree 4 term here, right? The 0 would be the degree 4 guy. So I think I'm a little bit off because if I put n equals 4 in here, I'll be including that next term. So I think I think what I want is I want to put a minus one right here. Okay, that was just getting those indexes right. That wasn't really anything that's going to bother us with our approximations. But our indexes are right now for this Taylor polynomial for the sine function. Taylor's theorem states that the error is equal to, uh, for the degree n polynomial, is equal to the n plus first derivative at some c value between alpha and beta divided by uh, n plus 1 factorial times beta minus alpha to the n plus 1. Okay, so how far am I going to have to go out? What n will I have to use to get an approximation within 10 to the negative sixth? We want the error less than 10 to the negative sixth well, our alpha is 0. We're evaluating at beta equals 1. So we want to find n so that the nth plus first derivative at c over n plus 1 factorial times 1 minus 0 to the n plus 1 is less than 10 to the negative 6. The n plus first derivative of the sine is, well, it's either the sine or the cosine. It's either the sine of c or the cosine of c. And those are both an absolute value less than 1. So we need n such that 1, if I make this as big as possible, that would tell me the biggest that the error could possibly be. If I make that as big as possible and it's still less than 10 to the 6th, then, then we're going to be good.
so that uh, 1 over n plus 1 factorial is less than 10 to the sixth, negative sixth, i.e. we need n plus 1 factorial bigger than 10 to the sixth. So I'm going to have to figure out which factorials I'm going to need. So I need 1, 2, 6, 24, 120, 720, uh, 50, 40, uh, times 8 would be 40,320, and then times 9, I get 0, 8, 8, 20, and 20. that. So that's not quite 10 to the 6th, so I better go out to 10. Three six two eight eight zero zero. This guy is bigger than ten to the sixth, so n equals nine makes n plus one factorial bigger than ten to the sixth. If we use the degree nine. Taylor polynomial will have an approximation with n 10 to the negative sixth. So we'll use 1 minus, sorry, x, p9 of x is equal to x minus x cubed over 6 plus x to the fifth over 120 minus x to the seventh over uh, 50 40 minus plus x to the ninth over 30, 362,880. If we put 1 in there, sine of 1 is going to be approximately 1 minus 1 sixth plus 1 over 120 uh, minus 1 over 50 40 plus 1 over 3 6 2 8 8 0 oh, which will be a good approximation to within uh, 10 to the sixth 